There's been a large amount of literature in animal models and in vitro studies to show that probiotics have a whole variety of important effects, which include protection against infection, stimulating host immunity, important effects on metabolism, and even effects on the central nervous system. Now, as I emphasized, these have been clearly shown for a variety of probiotic bacteria in animal models. Where we have less data is in man. But here we do have some already well-demonstrated effects. For example, it is known that probiotics have an impact on gastrointestinal infections, particularly in children. Furthermore, it's also been shown that some probiotics can actually stimulate the immune system in normal man and even in individuals with inflammatory conditions. I would emphasize a number of areas. First of all, I think a move away perhaps from whole bacteria to bacterial products or components of bacteria, which have been demonstrated again in the laboratory to have a variety of important properties. The other area will be looking at probiotics as vehicles, if you like, as transporting agents to deliver important molecules to the gastrointestinal tract. Already we have some evidence in inflammatory bowel disease, for example, that this can be effective. In the past, we thought that only long-term changes in diet, like changing from a vegetarian diet to a meat-eating diet, could have an impact on the microbiota. But now we know that even short-term changes have a very important impact. This is very important, not only in terms of understanding the microbiota, but also in interpreting studies in man. Because unfortunately, a lot of studies have not accounted for differences in diet between different populations. So I think we've got to be careful when we interpret human studies because what we might be seeing is not the effect of the disease, but the effect of a different diet that people with disease have in comparison to normal healthy individuals. I think so far, you know, this morning we had a lot of exciting data on the impact of the microbiota in early life. And particularly exciting for me was to hear about the impact of antibiotics in those early stages of life. And I know we're going to hear more about this throughout the conference, but I think we're getting more and more concerned about the impact that antibiotics have early in life in terms of disease or disease susceptibility later in life. I think this is going to be a very hot topic for a while.